So this is my FX61. This is one of the first planes ever built. It's not the best, it's not the neatest, but it flies beautifully. Um, it's in need of a motor replacement. Uh, this has an F411 wing flight controller in it. It's a pigsty, everything in here, and I know about all that. It was what the very first uh, flight controller I ever put together. Uh, the plan will be to re rebuild this eventually. It's just the motor doesn't sound the greatest. I've just got it hooked up at the moment to uh, INAV here. And I'll just give you a listen to the motor and what I'm talking about. And you can hear how loud it is. Um, it sounds like a bearing or I don't know, but I'm not risking that anymore because it's not something you want to fail while you're at some distance away from home. So I bought a, uh, it's a race star off Banggood. Thought I'd give this one a try. It's had a few good reviews, same size. It is uh, a bit lower KV though. This one's a 950 KV motor. Uh, the one in here is a 1250. So maybe I might get a bit more efficiency. I, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, it certainly won't be as fast top speed. I don't care about that. It's a cruising plane. This one. For those who don't have a, a an FX sixty one, these are a great plane. They're an old plane. Well, I mean, six to they're five between five and ten years old. This particular model. Um, they fly beautifully. They float in the in the sky. You can. Almost glide with it, I think. But it's um, it's a beautiful plane to fly and set up for long range, which is why I bought it in the first place. Um, it's got a bigger brother, uh, which is the FX79, which I've always wanted, and I might even eventually get one as well. It's just as old, but I'm just a bit, well, I'm I'm a bit concerned about the parts if if you were to crash it and. This 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 FX sixty one here has a it has got a one point five meter wingspan. Uh, its brother has a two meter wingspan, and there's also a, a smaller version too. They're all the same style planes, but there's a smaller version too, which is the uh, popular Wing Wing Z eighty four, which a lot of people do as well for a long range. This plan I do I do plan on upgrading this um, flight controller. This hasn't been too bad, but they do lack. UARTs. Um, it does. It does what it needs for this setup, I guess. But it's um, yeah. I just wouldn't mind putting a black box in it so I can record data. I'm trying to do that to all my planes now. Get flight controllers that have a black box setup. I'm I'm still keen to do an Ardu plane, an Ardu pilot plane. I can feel a huge difference with this motor. I think it's had its time. It's very it still, still still spins okay, but it's you could hear how loud it was. So this was a 1200 kV 35 36 motor that came stock with it. It's done its job. I am try. I'm keen to try this one though. Right, what we need to do is put some. I need to shorten these. Let's have a look, see what length of cables we got. I think we're pretty right. I don't know if I will cut them. I think I'll just leave it as it is. But the other ones are about the same length anyway. Okay, so this motor mount here, it's a timber plate which is glued onto a plastic uh, motor mount basically. And the motor mount itself sits under this black piece and also on top of the fuselage here. Um, I highly recommend if you do ever get uh, one of these FX61s, uh, what I've done with this to strengthen it, because this is a weak point. If it's not glued properly, your motor can torque off and just rip the top of this and the mount out. So the way I've got around that, um, well, I haven't got around, I wouldn't say, but it hasn't happened yet anyway. But what I've done to help combat that is I've put two 
one one inch rods about yeah, about an inch long 20 to 30 millimeters long in each side two in this side two in that side um, and set this on top so it strengthened it up and I've hot glued everything in as you can see um, it's it's worked well and it's it's not going to come off in a hurry uh, so this this plane anyway doesn't do a lot of it's a cruiser so it, it, it sits at the one it sits at the one uh, revolution pretty much most of its flight it, it cruises along but I would recommend that uh, two rods in each side of these to um, it'll help strengthen it it's not going to twist off a little bit of thread locker make sure you put your thread locker on your screws especially on the motor yeah this I'm using uh, a medium strength thread locker here you don't want it you want to be able to get it off if you have to, and I think medium's fine. Anything less than that, you're risking it a bit, and that's all you need. So that's it there. It looks good, actually. Red and black ma matches the rest of the plane. Um, 950 kV motor now. All right, so next step, we'll just hook up the wiring here. It doesn't matter which way you hook it up because if it's going in the wrong direction, all you do is reverse two of these wires. Just swap two wires over and that'll change the direction of the motor. But I'm just going to hook it up as it is like that. And what we'll do is go and test it now on INAV. All right, so yeah, here we go. Hook the plane up, got power. LEDs are on. And we head into INAV here. We're already connected up. So let's go into the outputs tab here. And what we'll do is scroll down to where it says motors. This little tab here, we are uh, activate this little toggle switch here, which moving the sliders will cause the motors to spin up. We're talking about these sliders here. Understand the risks, the props are removed. Uh, enable to enable motor control so make sure your props aren't on the plane because when you move these switches here now the motor will go on the plane so let's test it out and that sounds a lot quieter a lot smoother make sure it's going the right way and it is that's the right correction it's spinning that way there but that's a lot it's a lot quieter. There we go. It's one happy plane. So another little modification I've also done now too is um, I'm going to try an 11 inch prop on the on this plane. What I've had to do it's uh, I've had to cut and remould my back fins on both sides here it uh, goes pretty close it does it does fit but it does go very close so I've, I've just remodified it here still looks pretty good I'm um, here to run an 11 inch 11 by 5 inch prop um, 5 inches all I could get I have got another one on order I'm going to try a 7 inch pitch as well so originally on board this used to have a 10 by 6 prop so I've, I've now gone up to an 11 by 5 I have since found an 11 by 7 so I've got them on order I'm going to try um, and I've also squared this off here this used to come out on an angle so I've squared this off so there's more more room there for the spin of the prop when it goes around so yeah I've got the 11 by 5 we're going to try with the new motor um, next step will be out in the field. This here used to be our old flying field. We've moved now um, to a different location. I still like to come here because it's very peaceful and it's um, very off the road and no people. Uh, the new area is good too, but it's um, kind of got a couple of farms right around it which aren't too happy about 
the uh, flying field being at that new location. So I still had to come here, it's good. Anyway, we talked about the prop, the 11 inch we're gonna test today with the new motor. And I've also hooked up a Firefly for some FPV um, onboard footage uh, in 4K, so that should look all right for you. And it's stabilized, this Firefly Q6. I haven't used it a great deal, but it's, it is stabilized footage, so it'll be interesting to see how it, how it comes out. So yeah, everything's charged up, we're ready to go. I'll, um, I think we'll launch it now and uh, see how the ESC handles the, the bigger prop. That's my only concern <clears throat> is the uh, is the ESC. It's on the stock ESC. So, all right, guys. See you in the air. So, just to let you know, also, I'm running a iNav six. I've, I've installed the latest version of iNav six on all my planes. So, this one's running iNav six as well. So, I'll set up this. Q, uh, Q6 Firefly camera here to automatically start recording when I plug in the battery. Never felt this this uh, calm up here before ever. So I wouldn't mind a little bit more wind. And a very important pre-flight check is always check your center of gravity before each flight. We'll see how she goes up here. I've got absolutely no wind. Took a bit of going, but it got there. Cruising along here, I can't quite read it, it's very, very bright. I'm under half throttle at the moment. And she cruises along really nicely, this plane.
bring it in now for a bit of a landing. Let's see how the ESC feels after a 10 minute flight. Everything felt pretty good. Um, most of that flight was always under, always under um, half throttle. I, I got to half throttle occasionally, but that was about it. Uh, ESC's got a little bit of heat to it, not a huge amount, but it has got a little bit of heat to it, warmer than what it once was. But other than that, it seems all right. On a short 10 minute flight like that, the motor's not even warm. I don't know what sort of efficiency I'm getting compared to uh, the 10 inch prop. I'm yet to work that out. I couldn't see very well with my FPV, with my FPV um, screen. It was just, it was just too glary. So I won't know much more until I get back home and have a look at the uh, FPV footage now that the wind starts to pick up now. Great. What I might do, I might even throw it back up again, but that'll do. I might even give it one more test off camera and um, let it go from there. All right, so I never, I never bothered putting it all on the screen, but I ended up doing a 40 minute flight with uh, about 30% battery still remaining. So going on those figures alone, I think, um, I don't think we've gained any flight time or efficiency. We've lost top speed, I know that. I, I can't do 100 kilometers an hour anymore. Maybe with tailwind I still can, but just general flying, I can't. Um, it, it, it feels good still. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be, it cruises along very nice still. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it, I guess. If the 11 inch prop, I'm going to keep it on there anyway, regardless. I prefer it. Um, I've modified the back fins anyway to, to keep, to keep it. So what I might even look at doing, that's 11 by 9 inch, no, 11 by 5 inch prop. Um, after the 40 minute flight, the ESC was still very, it was warm, but I could touch it. It wasn't hot, too hot to touch. The motor was barely warm. So I think there's still a little bit of room there. Might upgrade the ESC still, I don't know, we'll see. I'm definitely going to upgrade the, the flight controller on this to carry a black box. Okie doke, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, anyone's wondering too about the Talon. The Talon, the Talon is ready for its maiden, um, and why I didn't bring it out. Uh, the other day I heard a bang in my garage, and it's one of my cats up around the plains, He's chewed, a, he's chewed a, a piece out of the Elevon, which has resulted in the plane coming down and other planes too. Um, and it's broken the, it's broken the uh, control horn on the back. So because of that, I'm going to have to replace one of the, the, the back uh, left elevator wing um because of the piece missing out of it and also replace the control horn. Now the problem is, you get parts for, for Zod Talon, it's very hard, especially those pieces. So what I've had to do is order a whole new kit. They had the kit on sale for $90 Australian. So I've bought myself another kit, which is going to have a basically spare for everything anyway. Um, so I'm waiting on that. That hasn't even been shipped yet. So that's going to be a little while again. So I've got to fix that, um, as you can see. Yeah, before I can get that one up in the air. So yeah, the cat's still alive, but um, only just. Anyway, guys, that's the word on that. So I'll see you in the next video. Catches, bye.